Hey, it's Jag. It's time to design the plus one. Well, I've been working on uh, getting things ready for the 2 plus 1 build. Uh, I've already done the first video on that where I uh, uh, made the circuit cards for the, uh, the two Jagsters. Um, I finally had some time to think about what I want the plus 1 to be. Like I said, it's going to be a, a pedal platform amp, but I hadn't really had in mind any specific design for that. The best pedal platform amp I ever had, bar none, was uh, a 1965 um, Baseman. It was a transitional uh, amp uh, from very early around the time that um, uh, Fender was sold to CBS. In the time between August 1964 and January 1965, Fender uh, did three versions of the Baseman. Uh, they're known by their schematic designations, which are AA-864, AA-165 and AB-165. Um, the AB-165 is the most common uh, basement uh, schematic of that era um, and the uh, AA-64 and AA-165 are both somewhat more rare, uh, especially the AA-165. Uh, there's questions on, on how long that actually was in production or whether it was actually in production at all, just a few got out into the wild. In the early 2000s, when I started uh, really l getting back into electronics and working on tube amps and learning about tube amps, the first thing I did was I bought two basemen. Uh, one of them was the very common AB165 circuit, and uh, the other one, the tube layout sheet on the inside said it was uh, an AA864. Um, when I opened it up though, it, it didn't match the AA-864 schematic or uh, the AB-165 uh, uh, schematic. So initially I thought it might be the AA-165. Uh, um, it was very, very close to an AA-165, but it had some of the features um, of the uh, uh, AB-165, including the, uh, the kind of wonky um, local feedback in the output section. Um, at any rate, that amp um, was the best sounding pedal platform amp I've ever had and part of the reason was it was just such a great clean amp with a very girthy uh, tone. It was a very big sounding, very articulate, not harsh in the high ends, uh, that slight scooped mids uh, that Fender's known for and like I say, a very girthy bottom end. It was just a great sounding amp. That amp took pedals really well. It was just such a good sounding amp. A couple of interesting things about those first two amps. So the AB165 had the standard uh, red um, amp jewel and the, uh, the other one had a green amp jewel. So I used to call those amps stop and go. And Go, the one with the green light, was just a really great sounding amp. I, I don't know why I ever sold it. It was one of the dumbest things I ever did. Uh, I have, in, in my history of owning music equipment, I have, I've bought and sold a lot of guitars, a lot of amps, a lot of pedals. There's only two things I ever sold that I, to this day, regret selling. One was my, uh, my second high watt. My, my first high watt was... Uh, uh, about a 1983 or 84 um, and I traded that to another guitar player in one of my bands for a high watt he had which was a bit older it was a 78 or 79 and that high watt was just a killer sounding amp and I, I was dumb enough to sell that because I thought I didn't need it and the other uh, regret is selling go uh, that was just such a great sounding amp and Again, it was just one of those things I convinced myself I had enough amps that sounded great that I just didn't need that one, and I've, I've regretted it ever since. So the one thing that I was smart enough about uh, with that amp, though, was I did uh, blueprint it. So uh, as I said, it was, it was a real transitional amp. It had features of the AA-864, the AA-165, and AB-165 circuitry. It had a mix of all of that. and. Um, when I got it, I recapped it. I, I made a few changes to it, 
um, took some of the wonkiness out, uh, the AB165 wonkiness out of it, and it was just a killer sounding amp. So I've decided that I'm going to base the plus one, and I'm calling it the plus one amp. Uh, I'm going to base the plus one on uh, that amplifier. Um, basically uh, the blueprint schematics that I uh, made of it at the time and what I remember of it and what I remember doing plus some other changes that I've learned over time. I'll start by kind of showing you uh, the, the differences between uh, the AA864 and AB165 schematics. Just a, a quick run through on those. So here uh, on my screen is the uh, schematic for the uh, Baseman AA864. The 864 designates August 1964, so that would have been when that circuit was, uh, was designed or um, it, it was really a modification of previous circuits. Uh, for the basement. If you look at that, it's, it's a pretty standard schematic, the bass instrument side, the normal instrument side. The main feature um, of this is that on the bass instrument side there are three tube gain stages. You can see here, uh, it comes in, goes through this stage, through the tone stack, um, and then uh, through to a recovery uh, stage. And then there's another uh, gain makeup stage right here at the end before it goes through this 220K mixing resistor and then off to the power amp. The normal channel only has two stages. So it's got a standard uh, input uh, gain stage, goes through the tone stack and then through a recovery circuit and then through another 220K mixing resistor. And then they mix together and they go off to the power uh, the power section of the amp. It's a fixed bias amp, um, very very simple and straightforward amp and the part that I most like about this amp is this preamp and I'll show you why when we look at the AB165 circuit. So here on the screen is the AB165. Very very similar to the AA864. If you look uh, up these schematics on the web. They're all over the place. You can find them and compare them yourselves and do a deeper dive if you want on it. Uh, the main uh, thing here though is both the bass and the normal instrument uh, uh, preamp sections, uh, they, they come in through their initial gain stage, they go through their tone stacks and, and recovery stages, uh, but then both of them go through their mixing resistors into this makeup gain stage at the end. So there's an extra gain stage uh, on the normal channel in the AB165. More gain, a little more of the classic rock sort of crunch tone when you crank the amp up. But that's uh, the main difference. The AA864, it's hard saying that. <laughs> the 64 um, doesn't go through that additional uh, gain stage. So it stays very clean. It's a very nice, very round, very warm sound. Um, doesn't uh, crunch hardly at all until you get up to about eight and a half, nine on the volume, at which point the amp's quite loud. And even then, it's just a little bit of light uh, crunch. So the amp is really good at, at doing that fender, chimey, clean, um, really articulate yet warm tone uh, and it has a little bit of that tube compression uh, that we all like about tube amps but it's not a it's not a crunch monster that's what I like about the preamp of the 64 the 65 I like the power amp section a little better and the main reason is uh, again we'll go back to the uh, the 64 you see when it comes into the um, power amp section here so Generally, I consider the preamp uh, everything up to and including uh, these mixing resistors, and then it goes into the phase inverter, which I consider the start of the power amp. And when you look at it, it goes through a 500 picofarad coupling capacitor. So it's a very small capacitor. It limits the bottom end quite a bit. One of the modifications I did on my original was I put a 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor in there instead of that uh, 500 picofarad and let a lot more of the low end uh, through the amp and it, it, it sounded really great. Um, I ended up uh, taking that back to a smaller value because it would it was a little it was motorboating a little bit. There was a little too much bottom in there. I think I settled on a 
uh, 0.022 microfarad. I don't have that in, in my blueprint actually, but I, I have strong memory of doing that. So this power amp section, uh, the, the main thing about it is how it limits the bottom end going into the power amp. Um, after you get through the phase inverter, um, we have these 0.1 microfarad capacitors uh, going off to the power tubes, so uh, not limiting the bottom end much there, but there was a bottleneck up here at the input to the phase inverter. The other thing about this, uh, this amp, the 64, is it's a fixed bias, uh, whereas the AB165 has the bias balance. Um, so the bias balance was uh, Fender's attempt to make the amp quieter um, at the expense of not allowing the bias to be really adjusted. It wasn't really, it was a fixed bias, a true fixed bias, not adjustable fixed bias. Uh, so the 65, uh, what, would ha what you would do with that is uh, you would adjust the bias balance. So if one tube was drawing a little more current than the other, you could adjust the, uh, the balance of that so that they'd both be drawing uh, equal idle current and it would hum less. Uh, the truth is, if they're a little bit mismatched, um, the hum doesn't increase that much. Hard, it's hardly noticeable at all. And um, a little bit of that uh, imbalance, that asymmetry to the signal, actually makes the signal sound more complex. So um, I much prefer the adjustable fixed bias as opposed to the bias balance. On the AB165 circuit, you see when it comes in, it comes in through a 0.1. Uh, microfarad capacitor and then goes into uh, the phase inverter. Out of the phase inverter then it goes through uh, 2.022 uh, microfarad capacitors and on to the power tubes. So now that I think about it that's that's what I did. I had the point one on the 64 I changed that input uh, capacitor, the coupling capacitor to the phase inverter to a point one microfarad and I changed these uh, a coupling capacitors to the output tubes uh, to the 0 0.022, so I lowered those. Uh, the other thing that I, I did on on that amp was I converted it to, as I said, the, the, the fixed bias, uh, the adjustable fixed bias as opposed to this bias balance. I'm not really going to describe how a lot of these circuits work, that's stuff for another time. I'm just going over this really quickly to sort of uh, give you um, some of the, the, the things that, that I liked about that combination of circuits that were in that original amp I had. What the Plus One is going to be based on is that transitional amp I had that was a mix of those circuits uh, that sounded so good. So I'm going to base the Plus One on that, but I have some changes I'm going to make to it too. Just to kind of recap, what I like about the 64 is the normal preamp only has two gain stages. Um, so it doesn't get into fire breathing territory uh, a lot of crunch. It stays really clean almost to right full. What I don't like about it is the power amp uh, limits the bottom end somewhat so it, it's not as, as girthy uh, as it could sound. It has adjustable fixed bias which I really like and then from the AB165 what I really liked about that was the power amp section, how it had a much larger capacitor allowing a lot more of the signal into the phase inverter and then at the output you limit the bottom end just a little bit but overall you get a lot more um, broadness to the sound, a much heavier, beefier, chunkier sound but still still crisp, not woolly and, and, and loose sounding. And again, this amp had the uh, bias balance, which I didn't really like. So on to what I, I've uh, designed. First of all, this is going to be a one channel amp. It's a pedal platform amp and it only needs one input channel. Um, I never use both channels on a, on a, on a basement anyway. Um, basically, I don't like the bass channel at all. Um, usually I would mod it so it had a a kind of uh, GTM 45-ish kind of sound so I could sort of use one or the other depending on what I was going for. This is going to be a pedal platform amp so I'm going to get all of my other tones, my crunch, my effects, all of those things I'm going to get from pedals. What we've got here is uh, the input here and uh, standard input, uh, input circuit uh, comes in. There's a 1 meg uh, resistor uh, to ground. 
uh, 33k uh, grid resistor and then it goes into the first tube stage pretty standard fender values here on the cathode uh, 1k5 resistor and a 25 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitor bypass uh, from there it goes into the tone stack uh, I'm going to start with the pretty standard fender tone stack 250 picofarad for the treble uh, 100k slope resistor uh, 1 microfarad and 0 0.047 microfarad capacitors uh, the main change that I'm making here is I'm adding a 25k audio uh, mid-range tone control where uh, the standard basement just had a 68k fixed resistor uh, for mid-range this will allow me to get the fender scoop tones but also boost up the mid and get a little more body into the into the tone from there it goes to the volume control I'm going to hardwire um, the bright cap for a clean sounding amp I like the uh, the bright cap I like what it does um, if I were building a crunch monster I'd make a switchable bright cap but for clean the bright cap is always on when I'm playing clean if I decide I don't uh, like it I can take it out or adjust it put a smaller value in um, same thing with uh, these uh, cathode resistors and capacitors I'm probably going to tweak those to get the exact tone that I want out of this amp I'm just using these as a starting point so out of the tone stack we go into the recovery stage again standard fender style uh, 2525 and a 1k5 uh, cathode resistor and then we go into the power amp and we're going through a 0.1 microfarad just like in the uh, AB165 circuit out of the phase inverter we're going through the 0 0.022 microfarad caps so same values as in the AB165 I've converted to a adjustable fixed bias here are the key changes that I've made uh, the uh, filter for the uh, screen supply on the output tubes I beefed that up to a 40 microfarad standard is 20 microfarad uh, 40 microfarad just uh, makes that power supply a little more stout and a little more solid uh, for that screen supply and same here uh, for the uh, um, for the main filter caps I beefed those up to 220 microfarad um, in series the standard values for those are 70 microfarad when you put capacitors in series it's like putting resistors in parallel the value the total um, value of capacitance is uh, is halved if you're using two um, exact same value capacitors so in the standard circuit um, there are two 70 microfarad at 350 volt capacitors uh, in series and um, the total value of those uh, then comes out to 35 microfarads um, why would you do that the reason that they do that is so that stack can handle more voltage a 35 microfarad capacitor at, even at 450 volts that's not high enough voltage to handle the voltage that's coming in on this power supply which can be up about 580 even even close to 600 volts to increase how much voltage that this initial uh, filtering stage can take they would put two capacitors in uh, series and then they would strap uh, two resistors across them this capacitor here has a 220k 1 watt resistor across it and same with the one up top a 220k 1 watt resistor that's a voltage divider so what this is doing is if we have say we have uh, 580 volts at the top of this filter uh, section this voltage divider is dividing that voltage equally between the two capacitors so our total voltage here being 580 volts with the voltage divider this capacitor is seeing 290 volts and this capacitor is seeing 290 volts so that's a way to increase your voltage capacity of your filtering supply without having to use very massive or very expensive capacitors so as I say the standard value is uh, 270 microfarads in series giving a 30 uh, a 35 microfarad uh, filter here I'm beefing these up to 220 microfarad those in series come out to 110 microfarad it's a lot more capacitance again it makes the power supply a lot uh, more stable a lot more stout 
um, a lot firmer. So the bottom end hangs together a lot. So you hit that low E and it comes out dang instead of do. Um, if you think, uh, I think a lot about the, the sound of Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar and how he would always hit that low E and it would go dang. And that has a lot to do with having a very stout power supply. So I've beefed up the power supply and those are 350 volt capacitors. So I have a total um, uh, maximum voltage that that, uh, that filter section can take is 700 volts. So we've got lots of room for any sort of power swings uh, that, that could happen in the power supply. So it's a good safe, good solid uh, power supply. These 220 microfarad capacitors, this was a trick that uh, steel guitar players used to have done to their, uh, their basement and other amps because they always wanted the bottom end to be big and clean and hang together well, not get really soft and mushy. Um, and uh, this was one of the first sort of modifications that was being done to amps and it was for steel guitar players so that their amps would be very very tight sounding. The main additions to this circuit that are not in any standard sort of Fender amp um, are this 40 microfarad uh, filter cap for the screen supply and this pair of 220 microfarad caps uh, for the, uh, the main uh, filtering supply. So essentially uh, I'm basing this on my hybrid uh, AA864 uh, Fender Baseman. We've got that preamp, this the AA864 preamp, and the AB165 power amp modified with a uh, true adjustable fixed bias uh, and uh, a beefed up beefed up filtering in the power section. So um, a little bit of a, a ramble, a talking head video today. Um, I didn't really have this too planned out. Um, but that's kind of how uh, this build is going and is intended to go. Like I said, we were going to design this on the fly. So um, this is my starting point schematic here. Um, this will be how I build it. Then once I get it built, I'm going to be playing around with some of these values to get this amp to have the exact kind of tone that I want for a pedal platform. So that's the... Um, the the plus one and my general thoughts and ideas for doing uh doing this build if you've watched any of my other videos you, you'll know that right now i'm i'm doing a couple of projects at the same time i've got the uh the two plus one build which is two jagsters plus this uh amp the plus one uh so three amps i'm building them at the same time in one series i'm also building uh a guitar for the great guitar build off actually i'm probably going to end up building two guitars uh, one is a, a practice and then as I get those things, uh, get things worked out the way I, well, I like them, then I'll take those techniques and put them on what's going to be the real guitar. So I'm kind of building two guitars and three amps at one time. And uh, as I say, uh, a little bit uh, off the cuff today on this, uh, I just wanted to show uh, what my general ideas are for uh, the plus one amp. The Jagsters, I already know what I'm doing. I know what they're going to be. Um, this uh, plus one I've been thinking about for a few weeks now and uh, I have wanted to actually uh, build this amp for a very long time ever since I got rid of my original uh, the one I used to call go so I'm, I'm really looking forward to building this and having a, a really nice pedal platform amp in my collection like always thanks for watching I hope you found this entertaining uh, interesting if you have any questions uh, please go ahead and ask. Um, I, I didn't explain a lot in here and you might have some specific questions. I'd be, be happy to answer whatever I can answer. So, so fire away with the questions. Um, like always, the links to my band One Soul Thrust are in the uh, description below. Uh, our link to Patreon. Uh, please check us out. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like what you hear, um, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Everything helps. Uh, especially with the way the world is now. Speaking of One Soul Thrust, we just released a, a, a new video. Uh, it's the third release from our, our newest album, Slaves to the Sky, Masters of the Mess. Uh, the song is called The Fight for Love. It's essentially a lyric video with visuals. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Um, I'll also put a, link, uh, uh, put a link up around here somewhere. So 
If you're interested in checking out our, our newest uh, uh, video release, click that, um, check it out, and give us some love over there. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, until the next video, we'll see you.